From hydroplanes to tunnel halls, Mercury racing has always been associated with the fastest things on the water. Starting 50 years ago in 1973, Mercury Racing is celebrating its 50th year of complete and utter domination of on-water performance. And in this video, I'm going to showcase some of the interesting history behind the brand itself and share what I believe to be their greatest hits, the top 5 Mercury Racing engines of all time. The history of Mercury Marine itself is both interesting and extremely entertaining, but this video is about the story behind an entirely different company, formed by the guy who started Mercury. And then Mercury bought that company later. Confused? Good. In 1961, Carl Kikefer, the founder of Mercury Marine, sold the company to the Brunswick Corporation and quickly started his own company just up the street in Tachita, Wisconsin. He called it Kikefer Aero Marine, which was an advanced research and development center focusing on world record-setting offshore performance engines. However, the drives from Mercury themselves were not designed for this power level and failed on the regular. After his death in 1983, his son Fred purchased the company and shifted the focus from engines to the propulsion systems themselves. In 1988, they released the Kike for K drive, an extremely strong stern drive capable of reliably handling the insane power levels of current offshore performance. In both 1988 and 1989, Boats equipped with a K-Drive wound up winning the Key West Offshore World Championship. In 1990, Mercury Marine made a move to purchase KK for Aero Marine and rebranded it Mercury High Performance Products, and then almost immediately renamed themselves Mercury Racing. The next few years were absolutely insane. Racing wasn't required to actually make a profit, but instead to build brand awareness by winning races using Mercury products, heavily sponsoring the race events themselves, and crushing OMC's hopes and dreams, which wound up going out of business only 10 years later. All right, so before we get into the top five Mercury racing engines of all time, I wanna take a moment to announce that I have a brand new YouTube channel called Advanced Garage. If you join to see the high performance boat stuff, no worries, that's what this channel will become focused on moving forward. My new channel will have all of the non-boat projects moving forward. The Porsches, Hondas, camper vans with matching camper van trailers, snowmobiles, Jaguars, BMWs, and building an off-grid garage in the mountains of Colorado. If any of that sounds up your alley, please check it out. Appreciate the support. Link is up here and in the comments. All right, top five Mercury racing engines of all time. Before I get into this, I wanna state that I'm not an expert on any of these engines. If I get anything wrong here, please leave a comment. I'm always happy to learn more, especially about things I'm passionate about. Now in five decades of producing race engines, this was really challenging to narrow it down to only five engines. So I figured I'd make it a bit easier for myself and just pick one from each decade. Admittedly, this engine is the one I know least about, but from what I do know, it was an easy choice. The Twister 2 and Twister 2X, abbreviated T2 and T2X respectively, started as a non-power ported block like a regular inline six, but that's where the similarities ended. Nothing on this engine was like one of their production engines. It had a unique crankshaft, three ports per cylinder instead of two, some sort of wild pyramid style reeds, and six individual single barrel carbs, which look awesome. Even the firing order of this engine was different from the production engine, optimized to provide maximum power at high RPMs. With a red line of 7600 RPM, these engines produced upwards of 200 horsepower for hours on end and were used in the fight against OMC's Super Strangler in marathon races. These powerheads sat on shortened 11 to 12 inch midsections and clawed through the water through Super Speedmaster gear cases. These engines were produced in very low quantities and are extremely sought after today. This, I, I'm not even sure this counts because it was never sold to the public, and as far as I know, there were only two ever produced, ever. The Mercury Racing Pro Max 200 Deuce High. This is, in my eyes, the coolest outboard ever produced. It is a great example of the fact that Wisconsin was largely settled by German immigrants, as this thing is over-engineered to hell and back, ultimately leading to the program's cancellation, as it wound up costing so much that the business case didn't even make sense anymore. That said, check this out. 
The power head is a fuel injected 200 horse Mercury 2.5 liter V6 Pro Max, sitting on an extremely crazy multi speed gear case, turning two counter rotating surface piercing props. Hold up, it gets even crazier. From a standstill, only one prop was engaged while the other freewheeled, and a computer controlled hydraulic clutch would engage the second prop when the engine reached a certain speed. These opposing props effectively cancelled each other out, resulting in amazing stability and handling. The water pickups, instead of being on the gear case, were instead built into the skeg itself, allowing the entire torpedo to be out of the water. This engine was supposedly tested on a Mirage Tunnel Hall on Lake X, producing speeds of over 130 miles an hour. Now, I'm not even sure if I'm going to do another video on this engine or not because it's so rare, but I do want to brag about the fact that I saw this beast in person, and I tagged it on Instagram before anyone else back in 2017. So there, hashtag before was cool. A lot of the success on the Optimax rides on the learnings from the two-stroke V6, and I've already produced a video on the history and development of that engine. If you haven't seen it before, please check it out, click above. In 1996, Mercury shook up the entire marine industry when it introduced a 200 horse V6 two-stroke with direct injection they called the Optimax. This meant the fuel injectors were shooting fuel directly into the cylinders themselves, not the intake runners. This technology improved fuel economy and reduced emissions, but it also improved response and performance. Now, over 20 years old, these engines are still being currently raced in some of the fastest boats on the planet, and they offer enthusiasts a reliable, powerful engine with an affordable price tag. If you want to go fast on a budget, start here. In 2010, just one year into the greatest recession since the 1930s, Mercury Racing unveiled an atomic bomb of a power plant for the offshore competition racing market, the QC4V. Gigantic in both size and power output, it had a price tag to match, costing roughly $200,000 when equipped with a drive that could handle it. The engine itself is a completely bespoke 9-liter V8 with quad cams and four valves per cylinder, producing 1,100 horsepower. Three years later, they bumped up the power to a staggering 1,650 horsepower, which is, if you think about it, like 1.6 Bugatti Veyrons. And unlike a car, where it might run wide open for a burst of a few seconds, this engine can reliably run for hours at a time, producing thousands of horsepower. In 2018, Mercury released V8-powered outboards, and in 2020, Mercury Racing followed that up with the release of the 360 Apex, which was developed specifically for the F1 H2O World Championship. Based on a modified version of the production 300R V8 powerhead, they bumped up the compression and increased the redline, developed a cold air induction system, and added some shorter intake runners. The 12-inch midsection was completely redesigned and integrates not only the power trim and lift systems, but also an overdrive gear set to increase prop RPM to be identical to two strokes. The cowling itself is completely unique to the Apex, created from a lightweight carbon fiber composite. The designers over at Mercury did a phenomenal job with this one. In my eyes, this is one of the coolest looking outboards ever made. For fans of both boat racing and history, this will be an interesting season as the new four-stroke Apex will compete directly against the two-stroke Optimax race engines developed by Mercury a few decades earlier. The two-strokes have a weight advantage, but some of the low-end torque of the Apex should give it an edge coming out of the corners. It's too early to say which engine is going to come out on top, but one thing is for sure, this is the best looking outboard ever created. So far. After 50 years of incredible history and amazing products, who knows what's in store for the future? One of the newest race series that hasn't even started yet is called E1, and it's the first electric race boat competition. The biggest hurdle to overcome with on-water electric propulsion is the weight of the batteries, and E1 solves this through the use of hydrofoils, which lift the hull up out of the water to reduce drag and improve performance. Unlike traditional powerboat racing, this series will emphasize handling, acceleration, and efficiency over brute force and top speed. 
I really think there's a lot of potential here for both innovation and creating new fans of performance boats because it solves one of the main issues with hosting a traditional boat race, noise complaints. I'm personally excited about the possibility of bringing on-water racing excitement to more populated areas and hoping that this might spur a renaissance in affordable boat racing. If you think about it, electric propulsion is well suited to closed circuit racing, as the heats don't last very long and you really don't have to worry about range anxiety. Like the boat that I showed you earlier that I restored, there are thousands of these antique and vintage race hulls across the country laying around collecting dust. How cool would it be to be able to retrofit these hulls with electric race outboards? If anyone at Mercury sees this video, please think about it. This could be a great way to reinvigorate a new generation of boaters with a passion for speed on the water. All right, guys, that's about it for this one. If you learned anything and you like this kind of content, please just leave a comment or consider subscribing. Much appreciated. Cheers, boys. See you next time.